Strange love. When did you and the boss first meet? Did she ever tell you about what she saw in space? Yeah. I saw the same thing along with her. The Soviets beat America into space with Sputnik. And so America rushed to be first in manned spaceflight. NASA used her as their top secret guinea pig, launching her deep into the cold blackness of space. I took part in the project. As a scientist. You were there with her? Yes. For a brief time. We were... One and the same, she and I. We sought each other out, completed each other. Did you know that inside every woman there's a universe? And that we are able to sense this in each other? We connected because of our empathetic female brains. As time went on, I began to have doubts about offering such a noble soul as sacrifice. Why would they... Why did she have to... <sighs> the flight test was a narrow success, and she miraculously made it back alive. But her mind and body were horribly mangled, and there was nothing I could do for her. We were no longer one and the same. She went away, and I, having nothing else to live for, immersed myself in AI research hoping that no one would ever have to make her sacrifice again. I never knew. It's not really worth knowing. We were ships passing in the night, that's all. Perhaps someday I'll tell you the long version, if you're interested. That was quite a warm welcome you gave me at the base in Costa Rica. Sorry about that. But I simply had to know. The boss's final act? Yes. By inputting her thoughts and actions into the AI, I was imbuing it with her mind. The only thing I couldn't understand was her final act. Operation Snake Eater. Official history says she betrayed her homeland and defected to the enemy and was killed by you. But it didn't make sense. The boss would be the last person on Earth to betray her country... It was logically inconsistent. It was, wasn't it? That internal inconsistency prevented the AI from activating properly. Just as Hal malfunctioned in the film, I understood the reasoning, but I had to have proof. Proof of her final act, her true intentions, one way or another. So you tried to squeeze it out of me, huh? As a matter of fact, I did. Your silence was the very answer I was looking for. That white horse the boss rode. The Andalusian, yes. How'd it get to Costa Rica? I went looking for it. It was her final witness. Even if it couldn't speak, I found it and brought it here. Where? I thought for sure it'd be blown to ashes by those megs. I searched the ends of the earth for that horse and found it at last in a horse market in Britain. Britain? Are you saying it came all the way over the Ural Mountains, through Europe, and across the English Channel? Who knows, really? Perhaps someone took it there. Wait, the thought never occurred to you that it might be a different Andalusian that only looks the same? I can't prove it. Or rather, I couldn't. What do you mean? You should know, best of all, that horse wouldn't let anyone ride it. And believe me, I nearly killed myself trying. The only one it allowed on its back was you. That was the proof. Though I hate to admit it. And to think... I ran it to its death. But in that last run, it regained the glory of its youth, using the last of its strength to pursue its former master. Any horse would wish for such a fine end. What do you make of Peace Walker's final act? I recreated her thought patterns exactly. It was exactly what she would have done. The world's most empathetic mind weighed the past, the future, and the entire world, and decided not to retaliate. Merely knowing that is enough for me. So, what you're saying is, we don't need deterrence to have peace? I didn't say that. What's important is that we wish for peace. MSF needs a way to protect itself from the might of nations. Survival requires pragmatic thought and action. But you must still retain your ideals. If the gap between reality and those ideals 
ever leads you to lose them. I doubt MSF will survive.